the early 90s is often looked back on as a golden age of video game music. Breakthroughs in home console technology meant that game composers could now harness powerful new capabilities, including a library of virtual instruments which could emulate real sounds. But nobody out there was confusing these chiptune orchestras for the genuine article. It would be another entire console generation before video games would even begin to be able to authentically replicate the music that inspired their soundtracks. Except there was one game that managed it almost a decade before any other could even dream of it. Streets of Rage. At the time, the Super Nintendo dominated the home console market in Japan, thanks in part to exclusive ports of popular arcade titles such as Final Fight. However, in America, Nintendo's crown was being threatened by a trendy newcomer named Sega. Sega's coup de grace on Nintendo of America was to be their own beat-em-up game to rival the Final Fight series. A modern urban brawler, Streets of Rage was set in the gritty punk and gang cultures of a fictional American city. Its soundtrack was entrusted to a young up-and-comer in the company named Yuzo Koshiro. Originally planning a rock soundtrack to match the game's grittier vibe, Koshiro changed his mind when he discovered the music that was making waves in American nightclubs at the time, and recognised the potential it had on Sega's Mega Drive a new genre of cutting-edge electronic dance music, which went by the name of House. In the post-discotheque era of the 1980s, American nightclubs relied on the new wave of mainstream synth-pop tunes to keep the dance floor packed. However, in Chicago, the very city where disco was detonated, there was one nightclub in particular that was keeping the spirit of disco alive. The Warehouse. Weekend resident DJ Frankie Knuckles developed a signature blend of disco, funk, R&B, and imported European electro music. The warehouse's unique style of dance music quickly gained momentum and spread across the country's nightclubs in the late 80s, becoming the genre of house music and birthing modern EDM as we know it. House music has been described as budget disco. Disco music was infamously expensive to produce, with its soulful grooves and lush orchestrations requiring teams of talented musicians and long studio recording sessions. House music attempted to recreate the 70s disco aesthetic digitally using the favourite instrument of the 80s, the synthesizer. Danceable four-on-the-floor percussion was handled by electronic drum machines, such as the Roland TR-808 and 909. While we now know the immense cultural legacy these drum machines would leave, they were, at the time, commercially unsuccessful. This meant they were plentiful in porn stores, where they could be picked up for dirt cheap by budding bedroom producers. Those deep, groovy bass lines were often provided by Roland's unmistakable TB-303 bass synth, the sheer prevalence of which would even spawn its own subgenre called Acid House. And the iconic horns and strings of disco could be easily emulated by the presets that came factory-loaded on Yamaha's famous DX7 keyboard synthesizer. Released in 1983, the DX7 became the single most ubiquitous instrument in popular music of the decade, thanks in part to that aforementioned preset functionality, but also thanks to its pioneering approach to audio synthesis. Prior to the DX7, old-school analog synthesizers would create their electronica through a process called subtractive synthesis in which an audio waveform has filters applied to it to shape its dynamics and sculpt it into the desired sound. The DX7, however, produced its audio via Frequency Modulation Synthesis, or FM Synth. This is when an audio wave is augmented not with a filter, but with another audio wave. It creates much more complex waveforms compared to subtractive synthesis, inherently rich in harmonics perfect for emulating the orchestrations of disco. 
Yamaha licensed this technology and built FM synth sound chips for products including their own DX7 keyboard and partnering with Sega for their Mega Drive console. This was a major point of difference between the two rival game consoles and helped to give Sega its trendier image. It was the console that could play the type of music you'd hear on the radio or in the club. Streets of Rage proved to be the perfect opportunity for Yuzo Koshiro to experiment with a game soundtrack steeped in the music of American nightclubs in the late 80s. Not only did the game's American setting lend itself to Sega's popularity in that country, but the Mega Drive's FM synth chip was an important cultural touchstone to the house music which defined the clubbing scene of that era. But in order to truly achieve that authentic house sound, Kashiro had to stray from the pure FM synth of Yamaha and borrow from Roland's catalogue of subtractive synths. He achieved this through a unique feature of the Mega Drive sound chip not found on its DX7 cousin, pulse code modulation. PCM is the technology that enables analog sound recordings to be stored as digital audio samples. Kashiro used the Mega Drive's PCM channel to sample Roland's analog synthesizers, such as the 303 for its bass lines, as well as the 808 and 909 for their beats. As a final touch of familiarity, Kashiro also threw in melodic references to popular club songs of the era, such as the early Chicago house anthem, Move Your Body by Marshall Jefferson. Gotta have house. Kashiro pulled inspiration not only from house music, but adjacent club genres of the time as well, including synth pop, funk and hip hop, R&B, and ambient electronica. The opening track of the game takes its down-tempo drum beat and pillowy synths straight from the 1990 hit Sadness Part 1 by Enigma. This then gives way to a section that borrows its R&B groove from the Soul to Soul song, Get A Life. The Streets of Rage soundtrack is full of these popular music references, reminiscent of a DJ sampling and remixing pop tunes into their set. Streets of Rage sounded unlike any other game of its time. It was more than just video game music. It was legitimate club music. Both VGM and EDM were music genres born out of technology and started life as an electronic version of other genres. With the Mega Drive's FM synth, Yuzo Koshiro was able to pull together these two genres' shared history and transcended what was possible for video game music. Not only did he authentically replicate house music in a video game, he did it years before it was possible for any other genre of music. He created a game soundtrack that was truly ahead of its time. But the story doesn't end there. While the first Streets of Rage introduced authentic EDM to video games, it was its sequel that truly cemented the relationship and gave the series its musical legacy. Join me next time as we explore the worldwide impact of one of the most acclaimed game soundtracks of all time, Streets of Rage 2.